It's a cool day in Borrego Springs, California, but Eleanor Schimmel is cooking al fresco. She's using no electricity, no gas, no charcoal or wood. I'm gonna check on this chicken and rice and see how it's, whether it's cooking. Ah, uh, it's doing a good job. Instead, Eleanor is harnessing the sun to make her meal, as she's done almost daily since the early 80s. As long as there's sunshine, regardless of air temperature, solar stoves can be used to cook everything from meat and fish to grains and greens. While solar stoves can be a great energy saver, in the developing world, they can be a genuine lifesaver. So with sunshine, you have an alternative to fire. And that's important for two and a half billion people to learn about because they're running out of traditional fuels. Bob Metcalf is a microbiologist and along with the Schimmels, a founding member of Solar Cookers International, a small Sacramento nonprofit. Their goal is to help stop the devastating deforestation and ease the burden of women. They have to walk about two to three miles or so to collect wood and then they have to tend the fire. It burns their eyes and chokes their lungs. According to the World Health Organization, this indoor pollution has been linked to the deaths of almost two million women and children each year. With help from other aid groups, SCI has already trained more than 30,000 families to cook their traditional foods with the sun. This is good, it's very good, uh, consistency is good, the texture is fine, no problem. We are all amazed that a cardboard box can cook. The solar cook it is a simple stove that only costs about five dollars, but will last almost two years. Shiny things direct the sunshine onto a dark pot that then absorbs the sunshine and changes that light energy into heat energy. And heat energy doesn't get out of the clear plastic bag. It doesn't get out of the window. Solar cooking is also being touted as a sustainable way to purify water. 6,000 people a day are going to die of waterborne diseases in developing countries. If you heat water to 65 degrees Celsius, 149 Fahrenheit, you can pasteurize water and make it safe to drink. To determine when this level has been reached, SCI developed a handy wax-based gauge called a WAPI. If the water gets hot enough to melt this wax, the water has reached pasteurization temperatures. From Nepal to Nicaragua, there are similar solar projects underway in nearly every country worldwide. And SCI is striving to get solar stoves into much wider use. Okay, so I'll